right, so let's talk about Ring of Honor TV. So there was some uh, so some little housekeeping stuff. Ring of Honor's uh, 19th anniversary show will be taking place on March the 26th, which is a Friday. It will start at, I believe, uh, 8 or 7. I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember what, what time it starts. But it's supposed to be a four-hour show with a one-hour pre-show, which will be free. So... They're going to have some type of free one hour show and then you pay for the next three hours. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'll find a stream somewhere. Anyway, uh, I will probably, this is going to affect SmackDown because I kind of want to watch uh, Ring of Honor live. I can record SmackDown and watch it afterwards and fast forward through commercials. So I may actually watch the Ring of Honor pay-per-view first and then watch SmackDown afterwards. So, uh or I'll probably try to watch them both at the same time. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I don't, I don't really do that, though. And I don't really like when people do that. Because I feel like you you don't really get everything out of it. If you're splitting your attention. But um, companies shouldn't run at the same time. I mean, it is what it is. But um, ultimately, I do want to watch the show live. I don't want to get spoiled. Um, and... So I do want to watch Ring of Honor live and I really don't care if they spoil SmackDown because I'm almost certain nothing on SmackDown is actually going to actually happen. Um, except for maybe uh, Fallout from Fastlane and that's that's it. I, I watched Fastlane so I know what happened. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, four hours is entirely too long. So in this video, what we're going to do, we're going to do the show, the ROH TV, and then we're going to do uh, the predictions. We're going to do predictions after we talk about the show. The, the show was two matches. It was Ray Horace versus Eli Isom and La Faction and Gobernables versus The Foundation. And they also did some promos for some of the matches that will be at uh, uh, the 19th anniversary show. I didn't really do a transcript of those pr promos, but there was the Jay Briscoe and EC3 promos, which were actually very fucking good. Um, to give a quick summary, uh, EC3, one of the guys who was like, um, you know, is honor real? And, you know, I want to want you to prove to me that honor is real and I'm invading your island. I'm invading uh, Ring of Honor and I hope you're willing to die to defend it because I'm willing to die to, you know, take it over. And Jay Briscoe says, like, you talk about controlling your narrative, but, you know, how about you control your own narrative? How many times have you run up to New York trying to be a superstar? just for them to, to jerk you around. Like we've been offered to come up there a bunch of times. He says, we got offered a big NXT contract. And I told them I make more than this landscaping. You know, I we built Ring of Honor. This is our yard. Nobody can run us up out, up out of here. And you want to talk about honor is real. I've shaken the hands of all, he ran down all these legends whose hands he shook. And he says like, you know, you can't even look me in the eyes. I'll never shake your hand until you can look me in the eye like a man. I'll never shake your hand. You don't deserve my respect. You know, and he's like, you know, who are you to question honor? I thought that was a fantastic promo. And I was like, whoa, I wasn't, I thought it was going to be like a short, you know, 10 second thing. Like they did one for Vincent and Matt Taven who are going to have a match, <clears throat> but their, uh, but their uh, promo was basically just, you know, we're going to finally end this, you know, finally it's going to end. Boom. And that was it, you know? This one was like they let them actually talk. They let that shit breathe. So it was it was pretty good, man. That was it was pretty hot. I'm I'm excited for that, and I'm very rarely excited for an EC3 match because I know he sucks. You know, Jay Briscoe is great. EC3 is not. So, but um, I'm excited for it. I'm I'm excited to get to get that one down. All right, so let's talk about the first match. The first match is Eli Isom versus Ray Horace. Uh, Eli Isom. Uh, this is I thought he quit wrestling. Uh. It was somebody who I believe was in Ring of Honor who got hurt or they had a bad botch on a match and then they quit. I'm pretty sure it was some lighter skinned black dude. I don't remember. I, th I thought it was Eli Isom, but apparently it wasn't. Um, Eli Isom was the former tag team partner of Cheeseburger. They were in a uh, Shinobi Shadow Squad, which sounds like a bunch of virgins. For fuck's sake. Um, Eli Isom looks like a very good egg. You know, he got the little dreadlocks. He wears his glasses. He wears his little button up. He just looks like a good student. Like he always went to school, always turned his homework in on time. He was never late. You know, 
You know, he his pants, he always had his shirt tucked into his pants. He always stood in line. He just looked like a good egg, like a good guy. Um, he talked about this being his third year in wrestling, and he spent all his entire career in Ring of Honor, and that he's an, a multi-sport athlete, played football, he wrestled. He said he hated being called a natural because he said that he worked very hard and that nothing came naturally to him. He had to go and work. And I, I loved that about him. I thought that was great. That was a great line right there. Saying, like, hey, you, you say it's a natural. It wasn't natural. I had to work for that. I had to bust my ass. So we started talking about, of course, being the, I fell in love with wrestling when I first saw it, which is generic pro wrestler. But then he put a twist on it. He made me care about him because he says, like, his mom was a wrestling fan. You know, and we talk about his mom, you know, and talk about his brothers weren't really all that into it. And his dad wasn't really all that into it, but his mom was. And then he talks about, you know, his mom died in a car accident. And I was like, fuck. There it is. Now you have tied this. It's my dream to being something personal. That this is something your mom really liked. It was something y'all bonded over. Your love of wrestling, your mom's love of wrestling is what motivates you to go out there and do this. This is how you do it. This is how you cut a baby face promo that talks about the same thing everyone else talks about, but it's specific to you. Specific to you. This is great. This is great. I didn't even write down his entire promo because he would, he really hasn't done that much of anything, but he says that basically he wants to win the, the television title. That's the um, that's the title. He that's the division this is in, and that he wants to win the television title because he sees that as the primary um, launch pad to to being a world champion. That you know all of the guys who have been world champion, at least most of them, have been television champion too. And guys who are on top, they usually are TV champion first. So that's really what he wants to do. He wants to win the, the television title. So we um this was excellent. I was I was bought. I was sold in on Eli Isom right there. So Ray Horace um uh went next. He talked about how close he was to beating Dragon Lee for the TV title and that you know um being so close makes him really want to grow make make him come back. And he told the Dragon Lee like, "Look, I may have lost, but in the rankings I'm still close enough to challenge you again." And then he talked about Eli Isom not being ranked at all and him being at the bottom of the list because he hasn't wrestled in a year. He, of course, obviously due to the, the lockdowns. Um, and they said during contract contact tracing, where they try to trace it, whether you have been uh, in contact with somebody who's had COVID or something like that, that um, due to that, they kept Eli Isom out of, um, out of the, out of the bubble, out of the ROH bubble. So he uh, hadn't been able to wrestle when they started back up in October. I believe it was he wasn't able to to perform, and um, you know it says it wasn't his fault. It just was what it was. So he really didn't get back into the tapings until now. So he hasn't wrestled in a year, you know. So that's why he's at the bottom of the division. But he's a young gun, ready to come back. And this is a babyface versus babyface match, so it was really standard. Um. They just did babyface stuff. You know, there was a lot of wrestling. You know, they just did wrestling stuff. There was nothing um, too spectacular. Um, except for um, there was a huge turnbuckle jump from Ray Horace. He uh, he did, I think it was, I forget who used to do it, but uh, I think Rob Van Dam kind of started doing it where he you would run to one of the corners and you jump over it onto the opponent. He did that and it was beautiful. He looked like a swan, very graceful in the air. And he landed on top of uh, Eli Isom. It was a great spot. Probably the most spectacular spot in the match. Um, Eli Isom won the match with a brain buster after he followed a counter. I believe it was, I think it was a tilt whirl that he was a DDT or something like that. He countered into a brain buster. And they shook hands before and afterwards because both of them are nice guys who uh, washed their own dishes and put them in the dishwasher. And then, you know, uh, tuck themselves in at night and straighten, you know, their sheets every time they get out of the bed. They're very nice guys. Um, so let's talk about this main event. Because this main event was crazy. Eight-man tag. Los Ingobernables. La Facción Ingobernables. I'll put it like that. Versus the Foundation. La Facción Ingobernables. Bestel del Ring. Uh, Dragon Lee, Kenny King, and Roosh. 
versus the foundation, which is Rhett Titus, Jay Lethal, Tracy Williams, and Jonathan Gresham. This match rocked. This is probably my favorite eight man tag ever. Probably. I'm really trying to, I'm trying not to be a prisoner at a moment and try to think of what other eight man tags that could have been. And I think maybe Canadian stampede, but I think Canadian stampede was 10 was 10 men. I think there was five on each side. Cause I remember the, the heart foundation being five. So I think the Canadian stampede match was five on five. This is four on four. So this might be my favorite, um, uh, eight man tag ever. So the match starts just nutty because dragon Lee is in the ring. And he's just being a complete and total asshole. Like he's being a, a complete and total asshole. There, the the story of the match is that the facts young on Gobernable is as the heels are being bucking Broncos. They're just gonna do. They're being wild, disrespectful, and they're just trying to bait the foundation into a fight. So Dragon Lee is in the ring, and he's being mad disrespectful. He's spitting on people smacking people he's flipping people off he is just going way too far three guys from los and gobernable spit on jay lethal three at three different points of the match they were just like they're spitting on him i was just like what the fuck <laughs> like just like why is jay lethal the guy that you spit on like him being the one they spit on him like three times like what the fuck <laughs> bestia spit on him roosh spit on him it was, it was nuts. Dragon Lee spit on him. It was crazy. It was crazy, man. Like they was going in there and Jonathan Gresham was trying to wrestle and Dragon Lee is just smacking him and shoving him and, you know, trying to bait Jonathan Gresham into a fight. And it was just so much fun watching these guys because the story, it started immediately. As soon as the bell rang, they just started being dicks immediately. Um, they did a pre-match promo, of course. Um, the pre-match promo was um, basically Los and Garbanovi saying, hey, we took your titles, now we take your hearts. And, um, you know, we are the past, present, and future. And the foundation basically saying, hey, look, we're going to, you know, to be ungovernable is a good way to get power. But, you know, what you guys want to do with the power is absolutely, you know, opposite of what Ring of Honor is supposed to be. And that you guys have all the titles and you stand in our way to win, uh, to purify Ring of Honor. And these two squads will be going head up in a lot of matches on uh, the 19th anniversary. So this had some really big implications and this was a great storyline coming in. So it's a great storyline coming into this match. And then this is not the end. This is not the blow off. They still got the individual matches to come out of this. But anyway, back to what I was talking about as far as the match is concerned. These these guys were brawling, you know. They were there was some wrestling stuff, obviously, because you know these guys can't wrestle, but they wanted to fight, you know, the foundation. And it was at one point in the match where the referee just completely lost control, and the commentators kept talking about this needs to be a disqualification. This match needs to be stopped because they had separated the foundation and they just started beating the dog shit out of them. You got uh, what was that? Somebody was being strangled with cords from under the ring. You had Bestia slamming a uh, dude's head in the barricades. It was crazy. They were all up on the uh, on the table near the commentary booth doing crazy stuff to people. They were beating the shit out of the foundation. It was great. It was awesome shit. And then at one point, everybody in uh, LFI was in the ring. You know, and they was picking up members of the foundation one at a time, beating them down four on one. It's completely fucking illegal. But the referee didn't have the balls to call it to call it disqualification. He just wouldn't stop. He just let them do whatever they want. And they just stood there. They beat the dog shit out of everybody. They would beat the shit out of like Tracy Williams or Rhett Titus. And they'll give they get like a baby face comeback. That's what made it like so dope. Is that the guys, they were beating the shit out of them, but they were still coming back. Like Jonathan Gresham, at one point when he was being jumped by these guys, he did a cannonball outside the ring. Like uh, the same thing that Phoenix does. The the tope that turns into a somersault. He did that onto all the members of the LFI and they all went down at one time. He didn't hit his own partners. 
It was perfect. He didn't overshoot. It was fantastic. You know, it was great fucking shit. And I, they had individual stories. They had individual stories in this match because there was going to be individual uh, matches. So in this match, and also individual personalities. You know, you got Lethal losing his temper. He's in there like, come on! He's spitting on people after they spit on him all those times. Then they're spitting at him. So he's losing it. You know, Tracy Williams, his, they call him hot sauce, you know, when he gets. So his temper, he's losing it. Gresham is, you know, trying to hold it together, but he's losing it. And Rhett Titus is there, you know. He's like, he's old Gil. He's, you know, he's cool hand Luke. He's the only one on the team. And he was beating the shit out of, uh, I believe it was Bestia that he was in the ring with. No, he was, it was Kenny King. Because Kenny King was, uh, <laughs> they anytime Kenny King and Rhett Titus, you know, they, the old All Night Express, anytime they were in the ring together, uh, Rhett Titus was having Kenny King's lunch, <laughs> which was great. But they kept, they, they had like Rhett Titus was being the guy who was, um, was cool, calm, and collected. The guy who was keeping the foundation together keeping them focused because everybody else was losing it because they kept disrespecting them. You know, it was like, it was, it was great. And it, it, it like I say, there's so many different stories there because you do have the, the Rhett Titus, Kenny King story because they're former tag team partners. They know each other so well. And, you know, this was, this was just phenomenal. It was a phenomenal match. The finish comes with a uh, bestial del ring. Uh, Pinning, I believe it was Tracy Williams with a, a version of the Tombstone Power Driver. It was a really fun match, fun as fuck. I would definitely be watching it again. I very rarely go back and watch matches again, but Ring of Honor usually have me watch a match more than once. I would definitely be watching this again. This is totes. This is totes. This is goat shit right here. This is really good. All right, so let's take a pause for the cause and get into these predictions. All right, all right. So, uh, ROH 19th anniversary will be taking place March 26th, 2021 at 8 p.m. It will be on Fight TV if you want to see it. Uh, so, here is the card. We're going to go through the card real quick. Four corner survival match. There looks to be nothing on the line. It's be Danhausen versus Eli Isom versus LSG or Leon St. Giovanni versus Brian Johnson. I'm a big fan of Brian Johnson. Uh, big fan of Eli Isom. Uh, Dan Housen is all right. LSG is just, uh, he's heavyweight TJP as far as I'm concerned. I would personally probably put Brian Johnson over. Um, he's probably going to, he's definitely got the most personality, him and Dan Housen. Um, it's hard to know. This is probably going to be the TV championship division. I don't know who they're going to pick. Um, knowing Ring of Honor, it'll probably be uh, LSG. They probably put the worker over, which is really strange, but eh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Brian Johnson though. Dalton Castle versus Josh Woods. This match was I did not see this match uh uh on being mentioned on television. I think this will probably be Dalton Castle's final match. Cause I do remember like he, he, they told me back in way back in December or something like that, or back in early January that his contract was up. So I'm guessing this is it for him. Uh so he's probably going to do, you know, the favor on the way out and put Josh Woods over in their final match. They're one and one in their series. Hopefully this match is, uh, lives up to the previous match. Mark Briscoe versus Flip Gordon. This match was born out of Flip Gordon costing Mark Briscoe the tag team championships and Mark Briscoe costing Flip Gordon a match on ROH TV. Um, I don't see, I think Flip Gordon's going to win this match. Uh, I don't see... How it really helps Mark Briscoe if he's going to go back into the tag team ranks. Um, which, you know, he may go back into the tag team ranks. I don't know. The Briscoes probably are going to be solo for a little while. Who knows? But I'm going to go with Flip Gordon. Um, so, unsanctioned match. Matt Taven versus Vincent. This is actually interesting. This is very good because I am interested in a Matt Taven match. And I'm almost never interested in a Matt Taven match. So, um, we got, uh, I do believe Vincent will likely win this match. Vincent is the guy that they're, they're building. Uh, Matt Taven has already been to the top of the mountain. Uh, he's already been the champion. He's already been the guy. I think that you push Vincent forward. 
So I think you go with Vincent to win this match. But this feud has been pretty good, especially from Vincent's perspective. Not ne necessarily from Matt Taven's perspective, because he is, again, tall version of The Miz. Um, except for not as good. The ROH six-man championships, uh, Shane Taylor promotions, which features Shane Taylor, Moses, and Khan, versus the Mexi squad, uh, Bandito, Flamita, and Ray Horace. Uh, Shane Taylor promotions just won the six-man tag team championships. Don't see them losing them anytime soon. Plus, Shane Taylor is pretty well protected in Ring of Honor. So, I don't see that happening. Let's see. The ROH Television Championship. Dragon Lee remains champion if King wins. So, Kenny King versus Tracy Williams. So, the tag team championships and the... So, Dragon Lee must be hurt or he's... Uh, will not be there because both matches, which will normally feature Dragon Lee, feature somebody else. So uh, Dragon Lee's television championship will be on the line, except Kenny King will be defending it. I wonder what happened to Dragon Lee. Did he get hurt? Um, does he have COVID? What's going on? Um, knowing that Kenny King is defending his title for him, uh, I definitely see these guys cheating to <laughs> keep the belt. <laughs> I think this is a good way to take the title off of Dragon Lee without him getting beat um, and actually pushing Tracy Williams. This is an interesting thing. It's interesting, but uh, I think this is one of the centerpieces of La Faction and Gobern Ibles is them being the TV champion. I wouldn't be surprised if they gave it to Tracy Williams, um, especially since they're, they're, he can beat a sub in Kenny King. Um but, you know, matter of fact, yeah, I think he could probably lose this match. I think Kenny King will probably take the L here and Tracy Williams will win the television championship. Because the ROH tag team titles, La Faccion and Gobernable, uh, Kenny King and Bestia del Ring versus the foundation, Tracy Williams and Red Titus. So Tracy Williams and Kenny King will be wrestling twice. I know that that's weird, which tells me something definitely went wrong. All right. Something definitely went wrong with Dragon Lee um, because he he was both the tag team champion and the the television champion. He's supposed to be wrestling twice. Um, so uh, Bestia is going to wrestle. Um, I can see, you know, maybe, but the the foundation just had the tag team title, but it was Lethal and um, Gresham. So it's a, I don't know, like. It would make sense for uh, the subs to lose again, to lose, but I don't think they're going to lose both belts. You know, they'll they're probably lose one of these belts, but they're probably going to lose both of them. I think Dragon Lee's been a television champion for a long time. And maybe you'll get the push, you know, for beating uh, Dragon Lee and not exactly winning the belt itself, but you having to beat Dragon Lee for it. So maybe Kenny King will do something to get out of this match. And um, the tag team titles, uh, I definitely think the Faction and Gobern will hold those tag team titles because they just won them. So um, I think Tracy Williams wins their ROH television title, and but the Faction and Gobern does hold the tag team titles. EC3 versus Jay Briscoe. This was a phenomenally promo, phenomenally built feud. Um, I too bad. Um, I don't think Ring of Honor would do anything that's going to be in any way cinematic. But um, I definitely see uh, maybe EC3 winning and uh, uh, officially getting that handshake. This feels like a feud you can blow off in one match, you know, and this is all about respect. It's all about honor. It's all about, you know, manhood. It's masculine. This is a very masculine feud. You know, controlling your narrative, being being your own man, you know, following your own path. You know, I, I, I love this, you know, and I don't like EC3. So I definitely see EC3 winning this match. Probably do some type of, probably not, not probably not through cheating because he's going to want to get that respect. So I think he might, will he get his, will EC3 win? Yes. Will he get his handshake? Probably not. I don't think Jay Briscoe will give him the handshake, but this ought to be a, this ought to be interesting. This ought to be pretty good. They did a great job building this card, by the way. The ROH Pure Championship: Jonathan Gresham versus Dak Draper. Okay, so 
Mile High, Dak Draper, I believe that's what he's called. He's getting his pure title match. I don't see Jonathan Gresham losing. I just don't see it. And uh, so I'm going to go with Jonathan Gresham. Dak Draper is, is a pretty cool guy. But I think the foundation needs to have some belt. They need to have a belt of some kind in order to, you know, uh, be able to be uh, competition for the faction and Gobernable. All right, so you have the main event, Roosh versus uh, Jay Lethal. Roosh versus Jay Lethal, amazing. This is going to be badass. This is going to be kick-ass. I don't see uh, Jay Lethal winning. Jay Lethal has been doing mostly losing this entire tapings. He's been just getting beat by random guys in random matches. So I don't see him winning this time. But I do think that this is going to be a hell of a match. And uh, I look forward to it. I look forward to this. Like, I feel, you know, Roosh is going to win here. Now, um, there have been, there's a lot of, a lot of whispering about uh, Andrade. Andrade. These are Andrade's boys, okay? Um, the Faction and Gobernable. You know, he is really close with Roosh and Dragon Lee. These guys have, you know, it is. it was said that when Roosh and Dragon Lee became free agents, they were looking into coming to WWE, and Andrade told them to stay there, stay in Ring of Honor, probably because he was trying to leave. And... You know, so they did resign with Ring of Honor, and now he wanted out of his contract, which, which oddly enough, which a lot of people was not paying attention to, Ring of Honor is having a pay per view the same week he gets his release. And, you know, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be fortuitous for him to show up and cost Jay Lethal this match? It will be fortuitous for him to do so. So I think Andrade will be here at uh at. Um, the 19th anniversary to give the numeric advantage to Los and Garbanable because the heel group should have the numeric advantage. It should be five on four, even though it technically is five on four because Amy Rose is there, but six on four, she doesn't really get involved physically. So five on four, as far as physical advantage, six on four, as far as just personage, you know, having people in the group. So I, I expect LaFaxion and Garbanable to continue their run. I would be surprised if they take any of the titles off of them, except maybe the TV title. I don't know what happened to Dragon Lee as he hurts. I don't know what's going on. Um, again, obviously the match, the show was taped before this. So maybe Dragon Lee didn't uh, pass the physical. Maybe he, you know, had COVID or he tested positive or something. In any event, this is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be kick-ass. Uh, but thank you guys for your time. Uh, like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to send an email, send it to Mr. Slade, M-R-S-L-A-D-E-8-4 at gmail.com. Use the hashtag 3 con commentary to support the channel. Send cash via the cash app, which will be in the description below. Uh, you can help me. Uh, pay for this stuff. <laughs> and I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace out. Make yeah. Yeah.